Kia ora year 12 and 13. This is the first part of question one of the 2015 complex numbers paper. So there are two achieved and a merit question in here, um, so it shouldn't be too bad. Right, this is the first, first question is to solve this quadratic equation. Whoops, get the pen going. So it's just this. Right, there are two ways to do this. Um, many of you are going to prefer to use the quadratic formula, but the other way that can be really handy is to use completing the square. So I'm going to do both of those, but I'll do completing the square first. So we can start by writing out the equation like this. We're going to put a little box around the first bit, and we're going to complete the square as follows. So we get x minus 4 squared, which gives me x squared minus two lots of 4x, so it matches up my minus 8x, and I've added in 16, so I need to take out 16 to keep it the same, so I get to this, now I get x minus 4 squared equals 12, so x minus 4 is equal to either the positive or negative square root of 12, which is plus or minus, 12 is 4 times 3, so plus or minus 2 root 3. So that's x minus 4, so x is equal to 4 plus or minus 2 root 3. Now just notice that that is the form that we have to write our answer in. You can't leave it as plus or minus root 12, or you won't get any marks. And fair enough too, right? So when we say simplify, we mean get it down to this form. If you're not doing that happily, go and watch the first couple of complex numbers videos that are on the complex numbers playlist. So now just to keep you happy, I will do quadratic formula on this, we've got a equals 1, b equals negative 8, and c equals 4, so x is equal to negative b plus or minus root b squared minus 4ac over 2a, so that equals 8 plus or minus the square root of 64 minus 16 over 4, which equals, sorry, over 2, not over 4, which is equal to 4 plus or minus 1 half root 48. Right, now 48 is equal to 3 times 16. So that's 4 plus or minus 4 over 2 root 3. Which of course is what we got when we did it the other way. So there we go, that's the first question done. On to the next one. Okay, we're given a complex number u, u is equal to 1 plus root 3i, and we're asked to clearly show u cubed on the Argan diagram below. So not u, but u cubed. Now, as soon as we start working with powers, the best way to do it is to work not in rectangular form, but in polar form. So we want to rewrite u in the form of r cis theta, right? which is r times cos of theta plus i sine theta. If you're watching this video early, um, we might not have done this in class yet, but I think you'll quite quickly get the idea anyway. So my little u looks something like that. And the idea with polar form is that we're going to say, how long is that line? And we call that the modulus. And what angle does it take from here around to here to get to that line, right? So that's very loose, but... That's a big idea. Um, so if we're going to do this the slow and clunky way, we would go that r is equal to 1 squared plus root 3 squared, which is the square root of 4, which is 2. And to figure out the angle, we can go tan inverse of b over a, which is equal to tan inverse of root 3. Now, we can do all of that much more easily if we return to our beloved special triangles, right? So here's 1, here's root 3, and here's 2. So if you know your special triangles and you recognize that straight away as a special triangle, which all of you should, you know that this angle in here is pi on 3, and there's my opposite and adjacent there, right? So the tan of pi on 3, the angle whose tan is pi on 3. So let me try that again. The angle whose tan is root 3 is pi on 3 or 60 degrees. right? And the modulus is 2. So that's a very long way 
of saying that we can write u as 2 cis pi on 3. And then by de Moivre's theorem, u cubed is equal to 2 cis pi on 3 cubed, which is going to equal 8 times cis of 3 pi on 3, which is 8 cis pi. Okay, so 8 cis pi is just going to equal, oh, let me get my pen back, it's just going to be negative 8 i. Now the reason it's going to be negative 8 i is that it's a line with a length of 8 and an angle of pi. So that takes me around to, if I think about rotating that, length of 8. So my point u cubed is going to be here. So we have u cubed is equal to negative 8 i. Okay. If that's too fast, um, you need to go back through some of the earlier work on de Moivre's theorem okay, and on converting between rectangular and polar. But the big idea here is that if we've got a power, we want to be working in polar form, not in rectangular form. Now you will get there if you just instead do this. 1 plus root 3i times 1 plus root 3i times 1 plus root 3i. Okay, but the chances that you muck it up along the way are higher than if you just turn it into polar form first. Okay, on to the next question. Right, so V is complex number 3 minus 7i, and W is another complex number, and they're both in rectangular form. So we need to find real numbers, P and Q, such that this expression is true. What we're going to do here is work with these and then match up the coefficients. So substituting in, if we've got P V plus Q W equals 6.5 minus 11i, P times 3 minus 7i plus Q times negative 4 plus 6i is equal to 6.5 minus 11i. So we're going to match the real parts and we're going to match the imaginary parts. So we have 3p minus 7pi minus 4q plus 6qi equals 6.5 minus 11i. The real part is this, these two added together. So that's going to give me 3p minus 4q. I'm matching that to the 6.5. That equals 6.5. And now... The imaginary part, negative 7p plus 6q will give me negative 11. All right, now you can chuck those into your calculator at that point, and you'll get p is equal to 0.5, and q is equal to negative 1.25. Right, they're pretty quick to work out by hand um, using your year 11 algebra techniques. Um, so times that first one by 3, and times the second one by 2, and you'll get a match-up going on here. Okay, so then you can add the equations together and solve from there. You'll get P first going that way. All right, but it's fine to get the simultaneous equations and then use your calculator, because you would be in a big hurry if you were doing this in the exam. Okay, so that's all for the first three parts. Um, this was a merit question. Uh, you got an achieved Tick if you got down to, let me see, if you just did that. Okay, so that was achieved right there. So pretty easy, easy achieved credit. Okay, I'll do the um, merit and excellence parts next. Thanks for watching.